How did African people get to Haiti? Interesting question. I wonder how. Much to consider there. Yeah, it rhymes with bravery. I'm saying it. What is this? Drew Binsky went to Haiti. Absolutely insane travel vlogger video recently from Haiti. What the f is on the verge of the abyss. Drew Binsky is like the ultimate white boy swag. All countries should ban YouTubers. No, Drew Binsky is good. Usually. I don't know how the f he he gets into places like this. He's actually insane. Exactly. US authorities now warning all Americans to get out now. This is I'm I'm a Drew Binsky dick rider, I'll admit it. I, I think he makes really good videos. My most ambitious trip to date. I'm going to Haiti, where 80% of the capital is controlled by ruthless gangs. We have been taken around by a bunch of gangsters and they're all armed with two guns in their pants. They're all boys. Militias roam the neighborhoods and terrorize, raping women and capturing foreigners for ransom. What's the worst that could happen? Good morning, ladies. He's not just a white man, he is the whitest man. He's like He's got zero melanin in his body. Like, he is... <laughs> it is crazy. And gentlemen, we'd like to welcome you aboard American Airlines Flight 2. Report to Prince. We're here. How we doing, man? Nice, nice to meet you. You're good. Look at you. How you doing? This is Sean, my guide as we attempt to enter Haiti's biggest slum. Let's do it. So, what happened? There was a lot of war going on. They decided to execute one of the chiefs. So, today? Uh, that happened two nights ago. Crazy situation it's out a, here. It's a jungle. <laughs> <laughs> Before we do anything, I have to exchange US dollars on the street for local currency because Haiti is a cash only society. I've been told that the gang leaders are expecting tips from me. Democracy Now talks to someone calling these people gang members is Western framing. I know. I, I, I listen to Democracy Now's coverage on Haiti as well. I am not of the mindset that like there are actual real revolutionary figures involved Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, they are paramilitaries. Like they're not, they're not like, they're not gangsters, even if their inception is criminal and a lot of their actions are violent. They're, I don't know how to describe it. They are operating as paramilitaries at this point. They are militias. They are paramilitaries. And, and many of them are former cops and shit like that too. It's like, this is an anarchist libertarian dystopia if I plan on filming in the slums. Are we gonna distribute the cash? <laughs> there, here's the thing, okay? The Western world, the global north, never forgave Haiti for being the first ever real example of a revolution comprised of almost entirely slaves. And that's just, like, even, even immediately after the Haitian Revolution, even after the Haitian Revolution... Like the very real fear that it would be, uh, it would spark copycats. It would, it would spark, it would inspire others to do so. Was was uh, genuine, firmly held. Also, for the record, I just want to say, shouts out to the Polish. This is the one major dub for the Polish. They, this is a a, a glaring Polish W. The Polish helped in the um, in the uh, Haitian Revolution. Said, don't film it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the police car. Holy shit, that's a big car. Oh, that's a Man. All right, here was supposed to be our palace, which was damaged in 2010 by the earth. U.S. slavers talked about Haiti a lot. Long after it occurred, they were still terrified by the idea of a successful revolution against slavery. Warned the governor of Kentucky that the White South stood on the brink of destruction in 1860, Secession Commissioner Stephen F. Hale wrote that Lincoln's election inaugurates all the horrors of a San Domingo servile insurrection, consigning her citizens to assassinations and her wives and daughters to pollution and violation to satisfy the law lust of half-civilized Africans. Hale's letter appeared nearly 70 years after the Haitian Revolution began and 55 years after Haiti won independence from France. Nevertheless, as Carl Lawrence Paulus demonstrates in the slaveholding crisis, fear of insurrection, and the coming of the Civil War, Hale's lurid images and graphic language resonated with many white Southerners fearful about the lessons of a free black republic might hold for the nearly 4 million people held in chattel bondage in the United States. Something to remember. <sighs> 
earthquake. Haiti's catastrophic earthquake in 2010 took the lives of 200,000 people. In the slums, it took nearly two weeks for any aid to arrive. Gang members escaped from prison, resulting in confusion over who was in charge. It breaks my heart to witness the leftover devastation from a disaster that occurred over a decade ago. But it adds to my understanding of why Port-au-Prince is the most dangerous city in the world. You have uh, a gang group not too far away from the palace. Ezo. Hi, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Uh, American. American. American? Yes. Uh, you like Haitian? I like Haiti. Why? Nice people. That was insane, dude. <laughs> Full police stop, massive, <laughs> massive guns. They had masks on, bulletproof vest. And they were like, what are you doing here? Are you a journalist? And they asked, does this guy have a passport? I'm glad I have it. Oh, yeah. This is Grand Rio area. You heard of the gang group Five Seconds, Ido Five Seconds. So this is the area down here. I feel like we've just entered into a war zone here on this street. Oh yeah. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, man. So I'm guessing it's not too safe around here? Not really. You sure we're okay on this street? Oh yeah. <laughs> this is a bank. Capital bank. Closed because of gang activity in a town. Look at that. Bank are closed. I've been a lot of places in this world and I don't think I've ever seen streets like Port-au-Prince. Something serious. The smell of that trash burning is horrific. Look at all the chickens in the trash. So the chickens eat the trash and then we eat the chickens. <laughs> we eat the chickens. <laughs> it's getting worse and worse every day and they're not cleaning it. But what happens when you take the garbage and remove it from certain area and dump it in another area. So it's like they never actually remove the garbage and put it in the place. Patient chatter here. People forget that main problem is not just the gangs, but how much America and other countries have way too much involvement in the country. And I feel like when people say free Haiti, they mean from the militia groups, but they should be from Western imperialism. I fear our country might be occupied by Western nations again. Oh, 100%. That's why, like, the major force here is supposed to be the Kenyan uh, uh, coalition created and not, like, American involvement because people understandably, like, Haitian people understandably have a genuine distaste for that sort of thing. Except... It is coming regardless. The way it should be. You can see the road conditions here are pretty poor. We gotta go over through potholes like that. We are rolling up to some street markets here and it is so chaotic. Total madness out here. Total madness. In the middle of the street market is just piles of trash. And then there's people selling on both sides of it. <laughs> You're popular, my friend. Oh yeah, Sherry! <laughs> this guy's sharpening a knife on the side of the street. I don't want him to come after me with a knife. Nah, he can't. See, he's coming to the window. Yo, that's Paso. Until 6 o'clock, you won't see none of them in the streets. Why? It's all be empty. <laughs> they go home. The area, they will believe that maybe they will might get kidnapped or something. Walking around these streets is absolutely mental, to be honest. It's so much commotion, so much attention with the camera. I'm constantly having to like hide in the back corner and stay away from gangs. We're inching closer and closer to the real gang territory. But first, we have to fend our way through a busy street market. There's a lot of going on on these streets. And Sean says hi to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what we call breadfruit. And that's the food that they used to provide to the slaves. I like her, her headband. That's like a West African thing. <laughs> <laughs> now this is crazy here. Look at that. Gridlock traffic. Are these buses? No, that's called Tap Tap. The Tap Tap, it's a pickup truck. And then this part is made here in Haiti. This is, all this is crazy, dude. All around me right now is just chaos. Now we're in the middle of the streets. We're going to do what you call a... Uh... Like a policeman. What's your name? Abel Espanol. Abel Espanol. Nice to meet you. Hallelujah. 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 What the hell was that about, man? Look at this street. The only city in the world that's close to like this is Mogadishu, Somalia. What's your name? Drew. This lady was calling me on the side of the road, so we're trying whatever she's selling. Thank you. I'm trying the breadfruit. It's kind of sweet. Really good. It literally tastes like bread. But apparently yeah, Drew has been into every country in France. Um, I mean, every country in the world. 
pretty much. Cinemarks is a, look. All I'm gonna say is, if one of our most wokest motherfuckers in the community is riding for a dude who makes YouTube videos as a person who has also been to many countries as a documentary uh, filmmaker, if he's giving him a seal of approval, if he's giving Drew the seal of approval, I'm gonna go ahead and and uh, you know admit that that holds a lot of weight. Did you want to say he was in every country of France? F almost every country that used to be France. I I almost said that. Good dude. Uh, overall, I've been to four countries filming with Drew. He's solid. So yeah, here let's uh yeah let's make sure that we have he's CIA one hundred percent. No man, not every YouTuber. No, <laughs> please stop, dude. Please, please, please stop. Jesus Christ, I can't tell if like this gives DRC vibes like crazy. That plane places. Hmm, I wonder why. Oh, I don't know why I thought DR. I thought you were talking about Dominican Republic for a second. I was like, just admit you're, yeah. I was like, yeah, no, I, <laughs> I wonder why it gives Dominican Republic vibes, but you're talking about uh, DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. Yes, Cine Marxism is CIA. The real CIA is the top of the hour ad break. That's what you should be worried about. That was not a good. That was actually not a very good segue, and I recognize that, and I admit that, but I don't really give a f What are you going to do about it, baby? Here's the three-minute ad break now. Apparently it's a fruit, some red fruit. We are not going to take motorcycles to get across town. It's pretty intense. That's all I got to say. I'm just standing here in the blistering hot sun trying to figure out what's going on. You know, the last time I did this was in Chad, and I was with my local friend. We took two motorbikes, and I jumped on one that was stolen, and I was in a police so I kind of stopped doing motorbikes. But here we are in the world's most dangerous city on another one. Saba? Yeah, Saba, Saba. Merci, merci. Yeah. We are getting like inches away from cars and people. Like an inch, not inches, one inch. The smell of exhaust, trash, and getting pelted in the face with dirt is uncomforting. Damn, dude. Yeah, did it. Holy sh thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I can't even see because of the dirt in my eyes, bro. Only two bucks a pop for the motorcycle, not bad. Woo! To better understand Haiti, we have to talk about slavery. The island of Hispaniola is divided into two nations, the Spanish-speaking Dominican Republic to the east and the French Creole-speaking Haiti to the west. Haiti once accounted for more than one-third of the entire Atlantic slave trade. Around the time of the American Revolution, the Haitian Revolution became the only successful slave revolt in human history. This revolution freed the colony from the French and sent aftershocks across the Atlantic world. As cruel as it was, it's amazing to see how Haiti's West African heritage plays out in traditions like voodoo. These guys have been drawing for like 15 minutes. I thought it was just gonna be a simple cross, but it's like a whole design. This ritual has a specific intention as the family prays for their son to be freed from prison. Can you explain how the people of Haiti retain their roots of Africa? We believe we're the only country in the Americas that actually connected to our roots. They also believe voodoo was the religions that freed them from slavery. Learning about slavery helps me better understand how Haiti got here, but now I need to prepare myself mentally because we are about to enter Cite Soleil, the most dangerous slum on earth. And this whole area here as we're passing is controlling by gangs. Hey, what's up, Bella? Hey! So what happens if the gang finds out that I'm here? Nothing would happen. You with me? <laughs> yeah, it's very empty, these rows, man. It's, that's why, because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did African people get to Haiti? Interesting question. I wonder how. Much to, much to consider there. Yeah, it rhymes with bravery. Chatter, it rhymes with chatter bravery. We picked up a bodyguard in case Sean is unable to protect me inside the slum. Are you sure we're good? Yeah, yeah, we're good, we're good. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, man. Hey, bro. What's your name? 
Nick's name? No uh, okay. That was the only checkpoint, right? It was oh, there was a lot. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle it. Is, okay. Are you sure we're gonna be okay, man? Yeah, yeah, we can, we can. Don't worry. I'm just gonna stay calm, but like, those guns are f***ing huge, bro. <laughs> Where's our destination? We here. Oh. Are we gonna, we're gonna walk around? Yep. I, must say, I literally see only big guns you're back, you're back. and like crazy dudes, like bandits, like rebels, not like normal looking dudes. Don't feel me yet. Okay, I have to keep it in my pocket. Hiding my camera, I shake hands with the chief who is a gangster himself that rules the community. I slap a hundred bucks in his hand and he appoints six more bodyguards to protect us as we walk around the chaotic streets. Okay, the he's good now. He's mobbed up. This fence is a hospital. That's white boy swag right there. It was a hospital. We're going to go check it out. It seems like the hospital is not even functioning. You got functional, no? There's no, nobody here. See what happened. Um, the nurses and the doctors does not leave in Saddle City so late. So they come early in the morning. They receive a certain amount of patients. And then after that, they left around noon, one so o'clock. So it does work in Because the of the insecurity, they, uh, they're not able to stay here. So what if somebody gets shot right now? They I spent a day in Haiti's most dangerous slum is the name of the video. It's also linked. Uh, it is by Drew Binsky, who I am a fan of, and I highly recommend you check out his other videos as well. He's great. You have to go somewhere else. Or die. Or oh, die. Empty in here, nothing in this hospital. So sad. As we are leaving the hospital, our guard tells us to stop talking and stop filming because the chief is walking by. I nearly crap my pants. Put the camera down. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Let me ask you a question. What, what would happen if we didn't call the chief and we just showed up randomly? I like calling them because I need to let them know that yes. we're coming just sure. in case uh, anything would happen. But I'm quite welcome to this area. Gotcha. Because of uh, the type They know of, uh, you. Yeah, yeah, they know me. Who are the dudes following us? Oh, no. All of those are uh, part of the yeah. our crew. Yeah. Okay. How often do you think they actually use their guns? These guys. Often, often, quite often. Like they to, always oh, oh. Yeah, to shoot to shoot people. Uh, they shoot each other. They will even shoot um, any person in the area that does not bow to their orders. We are bowing to their orders, right? Yeah. You'll get a shot in your leg. Jesus. I see that happen before. <laughs> I don't want to make them upset with me. Either. Of course. So this is also. Uh, one of the places on the planet, like in Mexico, cartels run areas, but if you're a white person in an area that is like run by the cartel, depending on where you go, you're still, if you're an American citizen, you're still like relatively safe or they will avoid you. Whereas this is one area where I feel like maybe it's not being a white person is now a burden and you will not be left alone, but instead will be used. Happened to you? No, I was, um, uh, <laughs> No, I, I dealt with the Mexican Customs and Border Patrol. That's a little different. Of course. So they, we're literally walking on trash. Yes, and uh, you see all of those, this is how the people are living. There's no running water, no AC, no, no. proper toilets, no electricity, no electricity. And there's like 400,000 people living in. Now it's uh, probably less because of the rival gang fight. Many of them have been dislocated to different areas. So these are just the local people here now, like the yeah. people living here. Yeah. And there are some people who can't afford to leave the area, so they don't leave. Can't really? cross. Really? <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, yep, me too. Now my shoes are completely soaked in mud. Smelly. This area that we're in is controlled by one gang, right? Actually, City Soleil is controlling by two different gangs. This part is controlled by JPEP. Yep. And the other side is controlling by another gang member called... Clip Chimp Alert, I'm now going to say that you're comparing the Mexican government authority to a gang. It's really funny that you say that because according to Mexicans, they are a gang. <laughs> the Mexican government authority is a gang. In some areas, not as... Uh, not as powerful as the cartels and in other areas just as ruthless so <laughs> g9 so do, do they kill each other the two gangs uh just recently there were six of them got killed and they were not killed by the police they were killed by uh the same members 
every slum I've been in around the world, they still have like little shops where you can buy food and water. Yeah, but here I haven't seen any of that. There is no shops. There is not even a small restaurant where you can call where they can eat. Nothing. There is pretty much nothing. Thank God we found water. I've been looking for the last like two hours. And bags of water. No place to find water, but we got bags of water. Thank you. Uh, can I drink this? Yeah, you can. Sorry. It's pure, yeah? It's pure fight. I don't know if this will make me sick or not, but I, I'm so f***ing thirsty. Oh, so good. I'm keeping my camera down everywhere because you don't know who you can meet or who you could piss off with your camera here. How's your bag water? Bag of water. That doesn't taste too good, but that's okay. It actually doesn't taste good. It definitely has a taste and water shouldn't have a taste. Should Look at him. <laughs> He's opening milk with a gun. <laughs> oh, it's a hammer too. That's funny. What is he doing? He's making a drink? Yeah. He mixed it up with a four-wheel energy drink. That's condensed milk, I think. That's cool, man. The energy drink. <laughs> get strong. What happens when you mix guns and energy drinks? <laughs> Haiti. So there is one shop this lady's selling. What is this stuff? Now they have hot dogs. Oh, cute dogs are here. They don't look very clean, bro. No. This is sweet potato. <laughs> he said they don't look very clean, bro. That's hot dog water right there. And this is um, great food. Would you eat that? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you just took a hot dog. <laughs> Dude, homie just took a hot dog. I don't know. I, I gotta try it. Some, some... Once, once, once you start eating, they all start eating. <laughs> yeah. How much was all that? Uh, that was for 250 goods after pushing me three dollars for all that. We bring food to the gate. Bro has Takashi 69 pants. I'm losing it. Oh my god! Another glaring example of America's cultural imperialism. Jesus Christ, dude. Get some. This is a house here, but it's completely empty. I mean, you can see it was a house. Now it's just on the ground. I think that's actually literally that bag. And also, you can see a lot of bullet holes in it. <laughs> yeah. People have everything. Huh? Bullets, guns, handcuffs, drugs. This guy is working with a bag of bullets. That bag that you see in his backpack is full with bullets. And a bulletproof vest. You see, why are you wearing a bulletproof vest? We always fight it. What is the bullets? We need them. We actually need more. This is the street life, man. And the ironic thing is we're right by the airport. It's much safer in the city or no, it's still f***ed up. Uh, like this is way more dangerous in here. This is way more dangerous. Okay, that's what I thought. It's okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, God. <laughs> that's a that's mud shoe. <laughs> a lot of it's just abandoned, like abandoned churches. Okay, that's a little park which we have. That's why they usually chill, but this is what happens. That's a park? Like a, where they actually sometimes they would do their little program. They have their little band would play. It would be happy to hear. Now it's nothing. Now it's nothing. It's fluted. The trash is a huge problem here and if nobody cleans it up, it's gonna get worse. It is. It's getting worse every time and every year. It's getting worse and worse. So the goat has this thing around his body because they don't want him to go in anyone's house. So that way he can't fit in the house. We are on a mission right now to go meet some people, try to document the local life happening here in Cinta Soleil. Every single house here is completely in pieces like this. Poverty is not even the word to describe this place. I mean, look at this little house that I'm in right now. Hold on to this. <laughs> don't do it too hard or it's gonna break. <laughs> oh, hello. Someone's in there. Someone's like just laughing at us as we try to walk through here. Man, it's crazy walking here. Oh my god. That's our rice with nothing in it. Just rice? Just rice. It seems there is no oil. And the feed is feeding that to the baby. At least it's something. It's something, yeah. But this is how they live in. Can I take a peek? Yeah. Hmm? This is one of the houses here. It's got a few beds and some cups. Holes in the roof, so when it rains, all the houses get destroyed. What is this? And here, Daddy. they make liquid here to wash, washing clothes. She made them. It would sell. It's pretty sweet. Does she sell it? That's how she make money. Bro, you're so sweaty. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your arms, bro. It's like water. 
Can you tell me what it's like to live in Cite du Soleil? So it's not too bad at all. That she was born, that's where she was. Are you scared of all the like gang activity and guns around here? Hmm? She says she's not afraid. Wow. She says she's used to it. Can I can I see inside of this bag? Would you show me? Those are all bullets. Damn. Wow. Where do you get these from? Oh, you can't ask that question. Okay, uh, <laughs> don't question. translate. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Munition. Ammunition. Oh, it's called to do that, then. The That's the bulletproof vest. Oh, my friend. Uh, what was that question? No, the covered part will be glissé sous lit. He said um, it won't be able to piece in, but it would hurt him yeah. to get shot. First. Yeah. Please don't point that at me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said those would not hurt him. Smith. Smith and Wesson. Yeah. Springfield, Massachusetts. From the USA. Yes. Yeah, there you go. You got your answer of where they get the guns from. They are American guns. How long have you been living here? Uh, it's been four years since we took over this area here. What gang are you a part of? Gabriel. Gabriel. And so, how do you become a member of the gang? So he sat fighting with his bare hands, and then after that, they give him that gun. And then he's managed to do even more with that small gun which he have in his hands, and now he have an AK-47. How do you feel that you walk around the streets armed with guns? He said um, he feels comfortable, he feels great because they don't bother anyone and uh, all they're doing is controlling their yeah. own neighborhood and their own area, make sure that it's safe. They are not involved in kidnapping and they're not stealing people's um, belongings. So um, Security. So he feels that he feels good. I, I appreciate you keeping me safe because I'm coming in here as a tourist and I feel comfortable with you. That's why we're here. Thanks, man. Do you hope someday that you won't have to carry a gun, that it will be safe someday? Yeah, even today, we can start even today and take the guns. If we have to, if we have to put the guns down, we will. How do you feel about the police, like if they come here? They already know that uh, the police are a legal uh, entity and they have to respect them. And uh, they're going to come, they're going to put themselves aside and allow them to do their work. There's no battle with you and the police. No, 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 never. Hey, thanks for keeping me safe. Seriously. It's sad to see this is the logical end to conservative politics for the U.S. and chuds are too dumb to see it. Yeah, you'll never be able to convince them because they're black. Conservatives think white people won't, you know, resort to this, this, this level of like system, systematic collapse because of the white supremacist values that they believe in not realizing that the only reason why this level of systematic collapse exists is because of white people, like directly. Question number one, how did the black people get there? Question number two, what happened after those very same black people that were brought there revolted against their slavers, their masters, and why they were kept that way? Uh, Haiti pays reparations to France. Something to remember. You too. I knew coming here would be intense but I never expected it to be like, these are real gangsters, real bandits. With you guys did not mishear me. I did not misspeak. Haiti pays reparations to France, the independence debt. The French government finally acknowledged a payment of 90 million francs in 1888 and over a period of about 70 years, Haiti paid 112 million francs to France, about $560 million in 2022. Something to consider. Guns. And there's way more of them than us. It's just me and Sean. Like, if anything went south quickly, you know, we, we would probably be shot. It's a really scary feeling. To say that I'm shaking is not even one one hundredth of how I feel right now. That's why I'm behind the wall. Everyone is armed. Everyone. Multiple guns in their pockets. This is so What's the worst possible thing that could happen right now? Like, we just hear a bunch of gunfire. Now, the worst thing that could happen is if another group attacked them. Yeah. That we will probably get uh, in between crossfire. Where do we go? Just in a building? Uh, but we will be fine. If that happens, what, what would we do? Just go in someone's house? Uh, we'll go into someone's house and um, uh, stay there until everything calms down. <laughs>
There is only one way in here and one way out. That one street. Whoa. Man, it gives me the goosebumps <laughs> when I think about it, man. That's, oh. Just walking around, you just hear banging sounds. Everybody's working, they're doing something. Oh yeah. They're banging yeah, away. You can see some positivity. Yeah. Like, uh, they don't stay idle. Yeah, they're staying busy. But how much money do you think they make per day in dollars? It's reparations for the losses of the slavers. France also compensated slave owners for their losses when they banned slavery. Yes, America also famously paid reparations, not the 40 acres and a mule that was promised to the recently freed uh, black men and women, but instead to the slavers as a form of compensation for the loss of their capital. Another not so fun fact, the UK has done similar things as well. Every single colonial country has that participated in the slave trade has done that, not to the slaves themselves that were now freed, but instead to the slave owners. Probably 10 to $15 per day. Yeah. Most people living here, they don't leave the community. They don't go through that checkpoint. Uh, let's say mostly those that are involved in the gang activity. If they leave, they might be killed. They might get killed by the enemy or even by the police or even arrested. And that happens all the time? That happens, yes, very often. I mean, let's say a lot of people cannot go about their businesses because of rival gang fight. And as you can see, we go around. Everyone is uh, um, Like Everyone has guns here. Has Multiple guns. guns. Yes. The only people I don't see are with the guns is the old women. What needs to happen for all of this mess to be safe? They should start arresting those people that are arming those people. Who's going to arrest them? The police? I don't think the police are going to do it because they are already bribed by those oligarchs and the politicians that are arming those young people in the, uh, in the ghetto. All these guns make it easy to believe how the government is in shambles here. On July 7th, 2021, the world stood still as the president of Haiti was assassinated. Foreign militants stormed his home in the upscale part of Port-au-Prince, riddling his office with bullets and shooting him 12 times led by an American DEA agent. Former DEA informant pleads guilty in 2021 assassination of Haiti's president. Joseph Winston pleaded guilty Tuesday to conspiring to assassinate Haitian President Jovenel Moise and faces a maximum sentence of life in, in prison. Whose killing in 2021 caused unprecedented turmoil in the Caribbean nation. Joseph Winston, a dual Haitian American citizen who lived in the U.S. and attended meetings in South Florida and Haiti ahead of the assassination, is the fourth of 11 defendants in Miami to plead guilty. He faces a maximum sentence of life in prison on charges including conspiracy to kill and kidnap a person outside the U.S. and conspiracy to provide material support and resources. He was not an agent. He was a, sorry, he was an informant. According to authorities, about 20 Colombian citizens and several dual Haitian American citizens participated in the plot. The conspirators initially planned to kidnap the Haitian president, but later opted to kill him. Investigators allege the plotters had hoped to win contracts under Moise's successor. Vincent, wearing a prisoner's beige shirt and pants, pleaded guilty at a hearing before the federal judge, Jose E. Martinez, that lasted 20 minutes. I think, I mean, given the way that, like, the American State Department works, the CIA works, it's just, like, an asset that you're burning at that situation, most likely. Now, the question is... It's not like the previous president was a good dude in any way, shape, or form, and he wasn't. That's why I said, like, every party involved in this, after an entire two centuries of getting f***ed over by colonial powers over and over again, almost every single, circum every single uh, entity involved is just simply self-interested and is working... Uh, is, is, is not working at the behest of some, like, revolutionary principle. There's no, there's not really a, a, a good guy in the situation. Times all over. It was not only shot him. I mean, they threat him like um, he was some type of a criminal. The way he was killed. His skulls were broken. Arm was believed to be broken. The way that they assassinated this man, it was worse than a criminal. Meanwhile, a manhunt ensued. Crowds of Haitians gathered at the U.S. Embassy as Joe Biden deployed the Marine Corps. Suspiciously, none of the president's bodyguards were killed during the ambush. So who's the new president? We don't have a president. You don't have a president? Two years from now, we don't even have a president. There's no president of Haiti. How could we have a president with all those gangs around? This might be the only U.N. country without a president or a head of state. It has to be. Yeah. You're entering a house here. Oh. That's how we eat. Hello. This is a vegetable called lalo in Haiti. Uh -huh. It's very well known. And uh, they consume it a lot. It's like spinach? Uh, sort of. So, 
They did. They sent in the Marine Corps to protect the embassy. They also pulled out a lot of the uh, uh, a lot of the assets from the embassy and only kept it at like uh, whoever needs to be there, I guess, including just the Marines. What's it like to live in this community? Uh, not bad news. So we're not living a good life here because it's hard to eat. We don't have access to money. I ask her how long she's been living in City so that she says 10 years. 10 years. How come you don't want to leave and go somewhere else? She won't want to leave, uh, leave here because this is the only place you have to leave. How often do you hear gunshots here? Yeah, very often. He said I'm used to it now. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> this is the kitchen? That's the kitchen. Not much food in here. Uh, there is no much, there is no food at all, as I can see. It's a kitchen, as I'm watching as well. The tent sheet, there's a lot of holes in it. And also there is a major hole in here. I'm just thinking when it's raining and the condition that those people must be living. This might be struggling. Because, it it uh, rains here a lot, right? It rains a lot. And just simply consider that they have no modern tools. They have no adequate housing. The only thing that you see in the video that is modern and, and uh, you know, that is up to snuff is the weapons. Just something to think about. They have the latest American guns and basically nothing else. Just imagine those holes yeah. that you can see. Yeah, it's, uh, I just ask her when it rains, how, this, how it happens, it says it's all fluted. It's sad that this is the kitchen, but there's nothing in it. And these living conditions are really rough, man. Oh, yes. I can imagine how they are able to live in a condition like this. Thank what did you give her, a few dollars? I give her uh, um, 1,500 goods, which is approximately 10 US. That's good, man. That's pretty good. Oh! oh. Mama. Oh no, what happened? Look at that. Ooh. Oh no. She's fluted. <laughs> oh, that's deep. What happened? <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> she said that's what happened. It's a water that's coming from the top of the mountain, like Petronville and Delma yeah. area. The rain? It, when it rains. Even though it doesn't rain down here, but once the water comes down, so the house will be fluted. So that's what happened. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. Oh man. Her whole house is flooded, man. Like at least a foot deep. Oh, oh, I want to help this lady. I feel so bad. Why doesn't she want to leave to another house? She would love to uh, rent another house, but she doesn't have the need. Oh, it's really sad, man. It's deep. Look how deep it is. Her feet. Yeah, it is. Behind me, this man is slaughtering a pig for this whole community, and they're all watching him. When was the pig dead? Oh, it was a moment ago. <laughs> Everyone's surrounding around here as they're about to cut open the pig. We're watching him slaughter the pig in front of us. Everyone's reacting here. I would love to help, but doesn't. Bro, what is he supposed to do? So, like, what do you want him to do? Sneak her out of the country in his luggage or something? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Let me let me bust out my visa here. Do they take visa? What is it? What is that? A couple of kids are hanging out. Saba? Saba? Let me sit your American handshake. American handshake like this. Yeah. You got it? Again. Yeah. Sean is telling me that they are going to close the border soon and we won't be able to leave the slum. We rush back to the checkpoint with no time to even think about what is happening. Are we sure we're going to get through the checkpoint okay? We are going to. The, I was just informed they close every six o'clock. Oh, this dude in the green hat is the one that escorted us earlier. Oh, he's coming on the outside. Yes, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, bro. Yeah. This checkpoint is super. This is the most intense checkpoint in the world, I think. That was it. We got through. Yeah. Damn, they all want money, huh? Oh, oh I'm telling you. Oh, and now we're on the empty road again. Woo! Damn, dude. We got out. Yeah, we got out. That's crazy. I just got to my hotel room, and I just want to say that I am completely exhausted, mentally messed up in the head by what Most I just- Most intense checkpoint, boy hasn't been to Iraq. Yes, he has, actually. He has been to Iraq, I'm pretty sure. He's been to, he's been everywhere. The, the, this is one dude. When he says it's the most intense checkpoint, I, he means it. Like, he literally has, you know, it's one of those situations where, like, you know, in one of those situations, you're like, oh, really? Like, as if you've, when he makes a comparison to, like, oh, this seems a lot like uh, Kenya or this seems a lot like uh, the Congo, most people would look at this guy and go, oh, what a racist piece of shit. No, he literally means it because he's been there. Like, <laughs> yes. When, uh, when I think, like, uh, when I think he's uh, talking about uh, when he when he's talking about like the instability in Haiti and comparing it to nothing else, basically saying that this is unlike anything I've ever experienced. I think he's personally talking about how how literally this is unlike anything he's ever experienced. Experienced. This is by far, by far, the most dangerous place in the world. I thought Mogadishu, Somalia, or Kabul, Afghanistan had the crown, but. Port out Prince Haiti is, is messed up and of course I'm grateful for the life that I live and if you're watching this video be grateful for the life that you live because it is not easy for everyone around the world. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, I need to go to bed. I'm just I'm completely messed up in the head right now. So yeah, nothing else to say. Good night guys. See you in the next video. Wait, what what do you mean? There's a you uh, there's a guy who said like this dude's gonna end up getting kidnapped somewhere during his poverty tourism all for YouTube clicks. Bro, I think there's a difference between someone who's like going to different places that are like poverty struck and and doing a decent job of like showing the humanity of the people that live there and the and the experiences that they that they go through versus like someone who very clearly is doing poverty tourism like come on dude this was like recognized like he he literally framed it personally uh he works with fixers he framed it personally about the impact of like the slave uh revolt the the slave revolution like he is this is as close to journalism as you can get from an independent source on youtube yeah it's like looking at 20 hours and 20 days in maria Pole and being like wow that's real war some such war porn you know the difference is he's not pogging to completion over the destitute conditions he's currently in yeah